For years, the Paper Mario series has continued to carry on a tradition of amazing content. Great places, unique environments, unique characters, all kind of great content. But one thing that the Paper Mario series used to do that was very important was side characters or helpers. All the way back with Paper Mario 64, these side characters helped to expand the universe and create some more diversity in the game. These characters helped you in the overworld or they even helped you in battle, and they helped you find secrets, defeat enemies, and do all kind of crazy stuff. But not only that, but each character had their own specific story that was personal to them, and they had their own reasoning for following Mario and doing what they do. For Nintendo, this seemed to be the new thing for Paper Mario. Paper Mario 64 continued this on to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, the beloved one, and even on to Super Paper Mario. But once Sticker Star came on the Nintendo 3DS, things changed, not for the better, but for the worse. So with Sticker Star and Color Splash on the Wii U, they changed up the formula by not adding characters or side helpers at all. Instead, you had one main helper and they followed you around and gave you hints and talked to you throughout the story and acted as more of a character than a helper. So I guess the question is what happened to these side helpers? What did Nintendo do to change them? Nobody complained and nobody had a problem with them. So in order to find this, we're going to go all the way back to Paper Mario 64 and talk about the characters and find out what dynamics they had to impress the game. Looking at Paper Mario 64, Mario had lots of side partners in this game. You start off with a guy named Goombario, which is a little tiny Goomba boy. He actually helps Mario after he falls from Bowser's castle in the air. He takes him back to his family, and then eventually Goombario joins Mario on his adventure. And it's kind of cool to see him break the nest and say, you know, bye family, you know what, I'm going to help Mario. And it's cool to see his family give him support along the way. Goombario is a decent fighter overall, but his main purpose is to give Mario information when he needs it. He can tell you how much life or HP the enemy has, he can tell you how the enemy attacks and what they will do to hurt Mario, he can also tell Mario about his surroundings nearby. Next we find Cooper, which is a Koopa Trooper who loves adventuring. He is super adventurous, outgoing, and he's just always excited to help anybody, and he ends up helping Mario, leaving his mom, and he talks about how he wants to be an explorer one day, an archaeologist to be specific, and he wants to be like the famous archaeologist in Colorado, which we'll see later on, and he ends up being just this super brave, strong turtle that we actually don't see anything like in Coops from Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, which we'll get to later. Mario can use him by kicking his shell to hit blocks or something that's out of reach. You then run across Bombette inside one of these castles, and she is then in imprisonment, and you have to let her out, and she, you know, shows her gratitude by helping you out on your quest. She blows up things, blocks, walls, enemies, and she's a really good addition, especially offensively, and she even helps with Cooper and with Goombario into feeding the Koopa Bros, which are pretty much Ninja Turtles, let's just throw that out there. You'll then be accompanied by a paratrooper named Paracarry, and he's actually the mailman in the Paper Mario series. Even games afterwards, he continues to be the mailman. He is just a really intriguing character because who would think a mailman would be your sidekick and stuff, but you'll help him find some mail and he'll actually help join you for helping him. He's actually a really diverse character. He can help Mario fly across gaps or chasms and he can even be a pretty good offensive character by hitting uh, enemies in the air. He then helps accompany you fight Toot and Koopa. Now what's so interesting about Bo is she is a boo that is actually terrified of something else. It's so weird to see a ghost terrified of another being, so you're thinking you're really about to come up with something crazy, and it is. Tuba Bluba. And you have to help her save her own boo kind by defeating this thing that eats monsters. And the way you defeat it is crazy, I don't want to get into that right now with its heart and everything, but... Bo is a dynamic character because she is strong and independent and she wants to help her people. And it really comes off as like she's a princess or something. And she's she's got this mentality like, Mario, let's do this, let's get it done. And I love that about her. She's a great offensive character and she can even help Mario hide in plain sight away from enemies. Oh yeah, she has a butler named Bootler. You'll then go into Shy Guy's toy box, no, not Pandora's box, but you'll find a little tiny Watt named Watt, and pretty much he's stuck inside this Big Ghost's Lantern, that's the name of this enemy apparently, I even looked it up on Google, it's Big Ghost Lantern, and you break him free and he comes out, and it's actually, you find out it's a little baby girl, it's a baby girl that joins your team as Watt, as pretty much this electricity ball, and she can help you see in the dark and find objects you may not have found otherwise. She's also pretty good offensively because she can stun enemies and let you get a lot more hits in. She'll also help you to defeat General Guy. Sushi is actually a babysitter of the baby Yoshi all over this island and you find her stuck in a tree because of the kids kept playing around too much. You get her out and you find the Yoshis and then she embarks on a journey with Mario and helps you out. I guess she said forget these kids, we out boy. But anyway, she helps you a lot by all these little water techniques and water shields, and you can actually ride her through the water and go underneath logs and other areas that you could not previously terrain. 
Her water powers actually come in huge handy when it comes to fighting the fiery piranha and she just puts out all of his flames and allows Mario to come in with the big hits. Spike then comes next as one of the last main helpers in this game and he was actually an enemy against Mario and he was lurking under the orders of Huff and Puff to build this machine to put clouds all over flower fields but Spike's sister did not like this and she tried to get Mario to help change him and Mario eventually does. You didn't find out from his sister his real name is Lackleaster, not Spike. Spike was his cool bad guy name and you find out that it's Lackleaster, it's kind of like a, a nerdy calm down name but eventually he comes in handy handy. I mean he, you ride him at a faster pace so that you can get through levels quicker. You can ride him over spikes or any type of dirty terrain and he's also really good on offense hitting land and air enemies and he just he does the part really well and he absolutely helps to fight Huff and Puff which he betrays and eventually defeats. It's a really good dynamic character. Now what's interesting about Twink is that Twink was never a side character for Mario but he was for Peach. He helped Peach because Peach was stuck in her own castle above Bowser's castle the whole time in the sky under Bowser's watch. But Twink would come back and forth to help Peach and eventually helps Peach a lot at the end in a small fighting segment. You don't really do anything but press A over and over and over again but it shows the braveness and the you know just fierceness in Twink and that he can become anything that he wants. You know he takes hits, he goes from 3 damage to 2 damage to 1 damage to no damage and eventually he starts laying the damage on Kamek and it's just amazing to see that happen and there's the character development in this story. He comes, he's all the way throughout the entire story as this main character and he really helps Peach out as her own partner. And he really just becomes this really dynamic star character because he helps the star sprites at the very end and creates this very powerful beam, the Peach Beam, and completely obliterates Bowser's shield and even helps Mario. Moving on to Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, we see a new type of starting character. Similar to Goombario, we have Goombella. And she is kind of this fierce character that becomes your first partner and she is willing to fight and protect Mario at all costs. She is brave and independent just like Goombario and she's willing to risk it all for Mario. Uh, she's very similar to Goombario which she can tattle and she can uh, tell you how much life each enemy has and what enemies can do and she'll also tell you where you are in the overworld and tell you you know where you gotta go next and kind of give you clues as to what to do. She's kind of your tour guide again and you also help her and help to defeat Lord Crump for the first time. Oh yeah and there's also a Bo and Bootler cameo in this game. Similar to Paper Mario 64 you have another second character being a Koopa Troopa and this time instead of Cooper it's Coops and this time he is completely different than Cooper. He has a completely different personality. He's afraid of everything. He's terrified. He's not sure if he wants to join Mario. And instead of a mom really in this game, he has a father and a girlfriend. His girlfriend bring Koopy Koo and trying to tell him to adventure out and help Mario on his quest. And his dad uh, ended up dying sometime a long time ago and he has no clue what the heck happened to him named Koopley. Uh, he finds out that he may still be in a castle. He finds like bones and stuff and he's afraid and Mario helps him out. And eventually defeating Hooktail, he finds out that his dad was actually eaten by Hooktail and is still alive. And it's just a great family story and it's a father and son bonding moment to see them together again and it's real touching. Next we find Madame Flurry and she is in the Boggly Woods. And the way that they portray this character is so unbelievable that this is in a kid's game. I mean look at her, she's literally not wearing clothes. She's a floating cloud character with no clothes. But anyway, she has a extreme compassion and protection thing for Mario. She's like Mario's mom, if anything. Like she's always protecting him and ready to jump in the way of the fight uh, anytime for Mario. She's like kind of the heavyweight character. Uh, she can use her blowing ability to like blow things out of the way so you can find secrets or blow enemies off the stage. And she can also just straight up body slam <laughs> enemies off the stage and stuff. It's amazing. But she's a really, also really cool character to be around. You help her out and she helps you out. Kind of like, I got your back, you got mine type of thing. And she's an awesome character. She then helps Mario to help the punies within the Great Boggly Tree and even defeat Lord Crump again in his giant mech, the Magnus Von Grapple. We then get to Glitzville, one of my favorite chapters in any Paper Mario game or any Mario game, period. It's like a giant battle arena where, it's like a wrestling arena pretty much, where Mario joins the ranks from some guy named Grubba. He says, hey, macho man, or whatever he calls him in the game. He says, listen, join this, join this fight and you're gonna, you know, work your way to the top to get this crystal star. So Mario starts fighting and stuff and he eventually makes friends with a new partner called just a Baby Yoshi. You know, you give him your own name and you pretty much create and raise this kid. And you find this egg and there's this whole thing with this egg outside of the food stands and stuff and eventually you fight alongside this baby Yoshi 
and you try to find out what's going wrong. You find out there's something wrong. You fight your way all the way through the ranks, even defeating the champ, Rock the Hawk, and you find out from Jolene, Grubba's assistant, that something's not quite white, right, and she's kind of like sending you messages and stuff to kind of spy on Grubba and find out what's wrong. Eventually, you find out Grubba is using the power from the Grand Star, or the Crystal Star, to get into Macho Grubba, his ultimate form. And you finally defeat him, finding out that Jolene's brother, Prince Mush, the original champion, was hidden all along from Grubba so that he could not become the champion anymore. It's a great story and it's a great way to add the baby Yoshi in there as well. Now, Twilight Town is one of the creepy worlds for the Thousand Year Door, and it's actually one of the creepiest in the Paper Mario series. It's a story about some weird creature turning citizens into pigs from some bell. And it's just, it's crazy and it's creepy. But you'll come across throughout the game these weird shadow sisters called the Shadow Sirens. And pretty much what they do is heckle Mario and try to defeat him. One of those sisters being Vivian. And Vivian is just really compassionate. You can tell from the start that her, her sisters continue to bully her and heckle her and make fun of her. And, you know, just pound on her for messing up and stuff. And she feels regret and she feels bad inside. And eventually, Mario gets completely obliterated by this creature and fooled and turned into the shadow version of himself. And he is left with nobody by his side, not even his partners. But the only one there for him is Vivian. She finds her heart and, you know, content to help this poor creature. She doesn't even know it's Mario at the time. And eventually she finds out it's Mario and is like, I'm glad I was able to help you. I'm glad that you were there for me and I was there for you. And she shows this compassion. She's just, just a compassionate character. And she's an awesome fighter as well. She's one of the best. She has flame attacks. She has sneak attacks. She can also hide Mario, similar to Bo did in Paper Mario 64. She's just an awesome person. And you even fight the Shadow Sirens again later, and Vivian's is like, this is what you guys get for messing with me. Here, take this. And it's just awesome to see her contribute to the party and become her own distinct person. It's also really cool to use her disappearing move to kind of spy on Duplass's parrot and find out what Duplass's real name is and then shock Duplass and then end up defeating him. It's so amazing. And last but not least, we have Admiral Bobbery. And this one is a heartfelt touching one because you need him in order to get to this island because he is a captain of the seas. And you hear about him and how he will never go off the seas again because something tragic happened. And you end up going through this side quest and getting a note from his wife. And it, find, uh, it ends up being that his wife passed away while he was at sea. You give him the note and he starts to read it and he's, you know, he never read this note before. He was out at sea one day adventuring when his wife was at home sick and he didn't even know it. And his, his wife ended up dying. And when he came back, he found out that she was dead. And he told himself that he would never go out to sea again. And just this much detail in a Mario game and for a character is unbelievable how much effort and quality they put into this character's story. And then eventually, you know, he reads this note and the note says from his wife that he cannot give up adventuring. Go back out and continue. And he says, I will. And he, he helps Mario out and he just plays this brave kind of like old captain. And he just helps Mario through all this times as this significantly important bomb character. Obviously, he's just like Bombette too. He can blow things up and just use all these cool bomb moves, break walls and stuff. But he even goes to full length to helping you fight this ghost of the caverns being Cortez. And eventually even gets Cortez to help you out. So it's an amazing journey and it's an amazing story. One of the best chapters again in the Paper Mario series. Just absolute great character. Now, when Super Paper Mario was released, it changed the formula completely. There was no longer RPG strategies, really. It was more of a 2D exploration adventure game. But still, it kept some of the elements of the Paper Mario series alive. The story was still very good, and it had a really good premise. And if you play the game at all, you'll understand it completely when you regard one of the main characters in the game. But continuing that, the partners continued as well, but not in the same form as we used expected to. This time we got these creatures named Pixels. Now we don't have the basic Koopa Trooper, Goomba, and stuff like that. It's these little shape type creatures that help Mario. And they add a different type of motive to the game. Instead of really doing something for Mario, they give Mario some type of new ability. Whether it be giving Mario the ability to use a hammer or ground pound or stuff like that. And it's a unique spin. These characters alone don't have big segments and big stories for themselves. But still at least there's some type of side characters that go with Mario and kind of build up his own team. So running through these pixels real quick, since none of them really have too crazy of personalities, you start off with Throw, which is pretty much an ability that lets you throw things. He lets you pick up items and throw them, or just pick up enemies and toss them out of the way, or hit switches that Mario couldn't otherwise reach. Yes, you need a pixel to help Mario pick things up. That's the logic here. We have Boomer, which is just a bomb pixel. You could set it down a bomb and let it blow up or detonate it whenever you want. Slim, which makes the characters super thin and tiny so that you can literally be invisible when things come by and you won't be able to get touched by anything. 
Berry helps you to not take damage, so you can just mow through enemies without worry about them hurting you. Thudley allows you to ground pound. I don't know why you need a pixel to ground pound, but if you need to, pound a peg in the ground. Here's Thudley. Carrie literally carries you around the stage. She picks you up and takes you over spikes or any type of rough terrain that you otherwise couldn't cross. And she even makes you move faster. I mean, literally this was the lifesaver when you're playing as Bowser. Fleet allowed you to look into small cracks or small little hints around the maps and flip them around to reveal something special. They also could dizzy enemies and, you know, make them confused so that you can land a cheap shot on them. Huge was Mario's hammer, and believe it or not, you didn't get it until towards the end of the game. He simply gave Mario a hammer. Dottie worked as a type of character to shrink Mario down to size so that he could get into small cracks or small areas. No more time for the mini mushroom. Dash L does exactly what his name implies, he makes the character dash, and once again, for Bowser, this is excellent, even though he still doesn't even move that fast, he just squirts his little feet across the ground like he runs in Smash Bros, look at this. And then with Piccolo, nothing really special here, all he does is play music when you require him to, and he opens up special boxes for special items. Also, it depends on what character is holding Piccolo, the certain song will play reflecting that character. Now, as far as TP goes, she's one of the most important characters in the game because she's actually part of the main story and you don't even realize it towards the end. She's this little butterfly that follows you around as your first main partner, your first main pixel. And she pretty much gives you the ability to have insight and to see things that are hidden. And she pretty much just your guy that talks to you and stuff like Goombario and Goombella was. But there's something more to her and you you you, you sense it. She's just, she, story climactic events happens to her and just bad things start to happen and you, you're like, why is everything happening to this one pixel? And you later find out that the main antagonist, Count Black, actually has some type of connection with her. And it goes way back to their own villages and their own time when they were both uh, younger a long time ago. And that TP is actually a princess of some sort, and she's been cursed and turned into this butterfly somehow. And it's just this love story that I don't want to give too much away right now, because unless you play this game, it's just a really good story that you should find out on your own. But these two lovebirds were just regular humans, like, a long time ago, and then something happened to kind of separate them apart. And it's just an amazing love story, and at the end, it comes together in such a beautiful way, because Count Black and his, you know, minions, being Mimi, Dementio, uh, O-Chunks, and even Natasia, they all help him, except for, obviously, Dementio, because he ends up being the bad guy. But it's fun to see, like, TP come together at the end and be this, you know, uh, this cute couple as they, like, go away into the dust and never to be seen again. And, of course, TP, once that happens, TP then gets replaced by kind of like this robotic version of the butterfly named Tiptron that you get from Francis by paying him a lot of money. So, you know, it works. Now, after seeing all of those different characters and different side characters, you have to understand where I'm coming from, how Nintendo used to have these amazing characters in the Paper Mario series, and it kills me and pains me to say used to. The formula has changed ever since, and even Miyamoto has changed it to fix a certain different direction, and I don't even know why. It was such a beautiful time to have these partners that helped develop and carry on the story even more. You had not just characters to help Mario and influence Mario's, uh, you know, character design and moveset, but you had these characters to help influence the story. You had a story about a young Goomba who left his family to help a hero in time of need. You had a story about a guy that lost his dad to a dragon and ends up finding him in a drastic battle. And you even have a story about an old man that lost his wife while he was out at sea because she died of a plague. And it's just, these stories are so rich and detailed and you only can get these stories in games like this. We had Sticker Star with Kirsty, and she just wasn't the fit, man. She just didn't feel right, and she kind of felt like Navi from the Legend of Zelda series, just nagging you in your ear the whole time. And Sticker Star just, you know, many people had problems with the game itself. It just did not fulfill that story need. And even after the fan request after Sticker Star, Color Splash still ditched the character's design, man. They just went straight with the main character being Huey, a paint can. 
And even though I loved the game and I even loved Huey, I just still felt like there could have been extra characters, there could have been side characters to help influence that game more. I mean, even Super Paper Mario, you know those pixels didn't have much of a story behind them. But still, at least they contributed to the game and added more depth and meat to it in order to make it, you know, more fulfilling for the player. So I think there was a time where we took side characters for granted. We just thought they were here to stay and, you know, they was never going to change. But it looks like we're in a new time where it is going to change, you know. And hopefully the third time's a charm and we're, as we wait for the new Paper Mario to come out, hopefully on the Nintendo Switch. And at this point, I think even a remake of the Thousand Year Door or 64 would help to get the wheels rolling again on these side characters and this dynamic story that Paper Mario was good at telling. And maybe, just maybe, one day, here's hoping, Nintendo listens to the fans and gives us what we want. Our partner characters back and a story better than any other. Here's hoping.